We studied uh, the immune mechanisms in the context of a phase 2A clinical trial that we have been progressing uh, on as part of a product development of uh, gene replacement therapy for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, uh, a genetic cause of emphysema. We have developed uh, adeno-associated virus uh, serotype 1 capsid uh, vectors that uh, deliver a gene cassette that consists of AAV type 2 ITRs and a wild type or M allele of alpha-1 antitrypsin and progress through uh, a dose response of this vector and at the highest dose uh, as shown in figure one uh, we saw expression levels that persisted uh, for uh, up to a year after a single intramuscular administration. Now this occurred um, in spite of the fact that we saw a robust cellular infiltration within the injected muscle and peripheral T cells that were reactive to AV1 capsid epi epitopes as is, is shown in figure two. Uh, so the question we were really trying to address mechanistically was how was this uh, able to uh, go on? How, was this, how were the myocytes able to continually express uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin for such a long time uh, even in the face of a T-cell response and the presence of those infiltrating cells. We suspected that there was a Treg response at play here because we had persistent expression at a year in the face of cellular infiltrates in the muscle biopsies. So we characterized the muscle biopsies for regulatory T-cell markers including CD4, CD25, and FOXP3. And we found that the muscle actually had these Tregs in them. Further analysis of the Treg by bisulfite sequencing and specifically epigenetic sequencing of the FOXP3 promoter, um, we saw that the muscle had about 10% of the T cells in the muscle had a demethylated FOXP3 promoter, which is consistent with Tregs. We then sought to see if the PBMCs from these patients um, would expand or activate Tregs in response to capsid. So we performed an experiment where we took PBMCs from the patients, stimulated them with, with AV1 capsid, and looked for activation. Um, and we saw a higher activation in the Treg population as compared to the conventional T cell population. Um, and this was all surprising um, because to this date, no one had really um, analyzed Tregs in response to AV capsid. The missing link of the story here was that um, if we had persistent expression and we had persistent inflammation at a year and these T cell, T regulatory cells were responding to capsid, um, why were they in the muscle? Was there still capsid around? And with immunofluorescence confocal microscopy, we were able to detect intact capsids in the muscle biopsies of these patients at 3 and 12 months, which then explained why the T regs were migrating to the site of, um, of these infiltrates and uh, thereby inhibiting the possibly the CD8 T cell responses and allowing for the persistence of expression from alpha-1 T trypsin in the muscle. These studies showed that uh, much to our surprise, the AV capsid uh, antigen was retained out to one year after an intramuscular injection. Not at all what we had expected, although similar to what has been observed in some animal models at, of injection of AV at other sites and that this persistent AAV capsid was eliciting a, a, an immune response characterized by a predominance of T regulatory cells. That causing those T reg cells then to home back to the injected muscle and apparently enable the persistence of vector expression for a long period of time. Now, if this phenomenon turns out to be generalizable, it could have significant implications for the clinical application of AAV to gene therapy more generally. What's not clear is whether this effect that we've observed is specific to an individual AV serotype capsid, whether it's specific to a particular route of delivery or dose, or whether even the alpha-1 antitrypsin transgene might have had some particular effect here. So we would encourage um, monitoring T regulatory responses in future uh, AAV cl clinical trials.